Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art. And you are here for a lettering tutorial where we are going to be doing using watercolors and lettering to create these fun Polaroids. I said that really high. Polaroids. <laughs> So, I'm really excited to show you guys this project. I know this was a, a, a favorite of everyone's. So, the supplies that we're using. We're gonna be using our watercolors, like I said. There are three different colors that we're starting out with. One is yellow ochre. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Scratch that. Okay. I'm going to make it look like this color wheel so that when we're doing this. Ooh, excellent. So we're using, start over. Okay. Yellow ochre. <laughs> Magenta. It's, it's actually pronounced magenta. Oh, oh, that's Turn new to me. Now, as of right now. <laughs> and Tahoe Blue. So those are the three colors. And then you can use any, any type of pens that you have. The few that I'm going to be showing you that I'm going to be using are the Tambo Fudenosuke brush pen and a Micron, the sepia color. So those are the two different pens. And then a brush. You can use any brush that you have. We're going to be using that to simply paint the backgrounds. Do you want to show those pens a little lower? Yeah, where they're not on in the, the left side. Yeah, that'll work. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, the... Let me move that. The five steps that we're going to be doing. One is you will notice that these are smaller than the paper that you will receive. So you're gonna to wanna to cut your paper into fours. This is the paper you'll have. So I cut them into fours. Then the second step is we're gonna tape the edges. So you'll notice that these Polaroids have these crisp edges. So we're gonna use painter's tape to use that. So I would add that to your supplies. And then third step is I'm gonna show you how to mix all the watercolors. So we're gonna pre-mix everything Fourth step is we're gonna show we're gonna paint the scenery. So I'll show you a few different ones that you can do. And then finally the lettering, which is what you're probably here for. So <laughs> we will get there eventually. Now, the I already did the first step, so I pre-cut my paper. And I'm going to now tape my edges. I'm gonna do two of them to show you how to do this. And Keenan, let's see if I can do this again. How much of the palette do you want to, want to be seen? Uh, oh, should I move this over to the left? Yeah. Smart. If you want the palette, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, cool. perfect. Okay. So I'm going to put them close together. And then I am sharing is caring, so. Mm -hmm. Unless it's food. <laughs> You're going to share that with me. That's true. <laughs> So I am just going to tape these down so you can decide how thick you want your border to be. So right now I am creating, again, this part of it. So where the blue is, that is where the watercolors will not be. Oops. Do the sides. And this, I was really excited to do this project for you all because this box theme is called Life is a Journey, and I think that it's so cool to be able to capture moments, which is why everyone loves Polaroids, but um, sometimes you can paint the Polaroid. I feel like that's cool. That is cool. In addition to if you have a Polaroid camera. But I was going to say is the other thing that I wanted to mention before I move on is for this part. This is where, like on Polaroids, usually there's a thicker spot at the bottom for you to write your place or a note. And so I'm going to create this. And so to do that, I need to put this tape a little bit higher. So it's going to be right there. So all of this is the, my white spot. And then this is where I'm going to paint my scenery. Nice. Okay. Now, mixing your watercolors. What we're going to do is this is a sheet that you can actually download on our website if you want to have the same exact one. Um, but I'm going to create this for you and show you how to do that. So we have our three main colors. So these are the primary colors. So even if you have a different yellow or if you have a red, you can still use that. Now, what I like to do is I do some scientist work and I'm going to start with magenta and I'm going to create 
three different colors. Am I gonna do three? One, two, three, yes. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop, let's say three drops here, two drops of magenta here, and one drop here. So as we go around, we're gonna create the different shades because the cool thing about watercolors is that you can create so many different colors. So in this one, I'm gonna do the opposite is I'm taking my yellow ochre, I'm gonna do three drops, two drops, one drop. So that way, this will be more red. This will be maybe kind of orangey. So that's like a rust color, but I call that, I call that clay. Mm. And then mm, that looks a similar color. So because of that, I'm gonna go and add in a little bit more ochre, because I'm closer to the ochre. So I want it to be a little bit lighter. Yes. So can you see the difference between that? Yes. Cool. Now, I'm gonna continue going. So here, so this palette has 10, so I'm gonna use this as my middle. So I'm gonna do three drops, two drops, You're one You're gonna drop. use the middle as your middle? Middle as my middle. Perfect. Yes. And then the opposite, I'm gonna take my Tahoe Blue, three, two, one. Now, this should be, oh, uh, so blue is pretty strong. This will be interesting, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty green. I might want to make one, let's see, I'm just gonna test these out. I might wanna make one more color. So that's a little bit more green because I'm moving towards the blue. So this will be a turquoisey color. Now, I wanna make one more color because when I am doing my grass right here, I want to make more of a yellow green. So to do that is I'm going to start with this and move it over here. Or I guess I can add it in here directly, but. And then I'm going to add more yellow ochre. So it makes sense actually, yellow ochre is, because it's a lighter color, it takes a little bit more to do its thing. That makes sense. I don't know the ter correct terminology, but I hope To that make it sense. more of a saturated yellow? Yeah, it's because, so either in this case magenta or in this case Tahoe Blue is a stronger pigment. So it takes less yeah. to change the color. That makes sense. So there, I made that one other color and now I'm gonna go back around. So three, two, one. Three, two, one. So that's more of a blue purple should be purple and then that one cool nice so those are all of my colors i like to do this before and then you can make so many different maybe you have a whole bunch of these polaroids that you want to paint if instead you're like, Nicole, I don't like to waste watercolors, I totally understand. And what you can do is you can use this and you can decide, okay, I think I like this yellow green, so I'm gonna mix that with this ratio. I like this orchid color, so I'm gonna mix it with that ratio. So that's another way that you can do this as well. Now, I am going to paint these two. Is this in the shot? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one. So. First, before you get started, I want you to pause and think about what you want to paint. So these are Polaroids that can capture any moment. I am sure at this time in your life, you are antsy to get out and maybe it's a it's some place that you want to go or it's a place that you've been. Maybe if you have your phone and you scroll through and there's a memory that you remember of a place that you've been that you want to paint. You can do that. You can look outside your window and paint what you see there. So don't worry so much about it needing to look either exactly like mine or you have to have this perfect picture to paint. This is for you to just explore. So I just wanted to say that. The other thing is that not necessarily pick a picture that's easier, but what I want you to do is help you to see that, um, look at things and see the basic shapes. So is it more circular or is it, can you break it up into thirds? Because I think we get intimidated if we look at something we're like, I, I can't paint that. So if you break it down, like I'll show you here, then it will allow you to just paint from your heart. 
So I am going to do this first one. I have been in Missouri for a while now and I wanted to capture this, this time that I've been here. And so I am going to do these flower fields. So I remember driving by and I saw these beautiful purple fields and I could see it in my mind. So I'm gonna do it in basically three different parts. I'm gonna do the sky and then I'm gonna do the greens and then the purple fields. So maybe if you've seen a flower field or something like this, or even if these are trees, you can take the same concept and use that as well. Okay, so for the watercolors is I'm gonna start with my Tahoe Blue and I'm simply going to paint. So I'm gonna overlap, so my, my, let me move this over here. My blue painter's tape acts as a resistance. So I'm gonna keep going down. If you want more saturated of color, you can add that in. You'll see how watercolors are a really fun medium where they explode. They, they, ha they need to explore themselves. So they just go into the different spots. So you can add more color like that. Have fun with that. So I'm just going to paint my sky. If you want to paint clouds, you can either use just water and you can add water in there and kind of paint them like that or if you want to make them colored, maybe I do the same thing, but go like that. So you can see how loose and playful I am. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just kind of letting the watercolors do its thing. Then I am, I'm going to let that dry. I want to have this extend a little bit more. So I'm going to let that dry before I go for the next step. And then the other one that I want to do is this one. So I'm going to paint a sunset. So I have, let's see, I'm spinning my wheel. I can choose, I can either use all of these colors. I can just start here. I think maybe I want a little bit of purple. So I'm gonna start up there. So one thing I wanna teach you about watercolors is you can decide how saturated of a color you want. So if you can see how light this color is, it's because it's really watered down. Whereas if you want a darker color, you'll just use the watercolor straight out from there rather oh. than getting more water. Will you put the reference photo on top of the other reference photo? Oh yeah, smart. Oh, you're fine. Oh, thank you. Oh, like that? Yeah, that's oh. perfect. That's smart. So as I transition, I'm gonna go along my, my color palette. This was the middle, no. Now I can't remember. Well, hmm. we're gonna keep going. Perfect. It's okay if it mixes. But I'm gonna transition to the next color and then I'm gonna overlap. And that's how you will create this ombre type of look. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get the next color, kind of overlap. So you can look at my hand and I'm just making these sweeping motions across. Go to the next color. So again, if I want it to be more saturated, I'll just go straight off the bat. If I want it to be more watered down and a lighter color, I'll grab more water and then get the color and make it lighter. So I'm gonna keep transitioning. I wanna go towards yellow at the bottom. And then for the sun, you can either choose to do it right away. I might do it at the end. So I'm gonna do a full sunset and then I'll do the sun at the end. So I'm going to add my horizon line right there. Okay. Now I am going to go back to this one. I have my, what did I call it, yellow green that I want to use for the grass. So I'm going to go and grab that. And when you're doing grass, you will notice that you might want to hold the brush a little bit different, or you're going to use a different part of the brush. So right here, I was kind of making sweeping motions like this, whereas for this one, I'm going to draw blades of grass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw them going up. So I'm using the tip of this brush and just making sweeping motions going up. So you don't have to press very hard. Thin on the up. Yeah, very true. That on that. That is it, exactly what I'm doing. And I'm gonna kind of overlap. If you want to, if you're like, ooh, I wanna make my grass a couple different colors, maybe I'll add in some green, change it up a little bit. So again, I'm just 
sweeping motions and I'm making them at different heights so they're not it's not like you mowed the lawn <laughs> it's not a fresh cut yet <laughs> unless you did just mow the lawn you're really proud of yourself <laughs> which I've heard Keenan say that before I do love a good fresh cut <laughs> Then I am going to draw my flowers. So again, whatever flower, if you are doing flowers as well, you can make them whatever color you would like. I saw the purple fields here, so I'm gonna take my purple. And this is a little bit different of a technique is that I called it dabbing. Does Sarah call it something? She, she also does the dabbing. Does she call it dabbing? I mean, it's usually a different name every time. So. <laughs> Which means that there's not a real name. Yeah, We're dab just, does work. It works perfectly. So I'm literally just dipping into my color and dabbing. So I'm going dab, 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 dab. Not the dance move. Dance move. And so when I'm doing this, I am varying where I'm doing it at. I'm not, again, the fresh, the fresh cut. It is going to look a little bit different. And like Keita taught me before and what Sarah taught you was do you want to say it about how the it's not perfectly straight yeah so in nature you're not gonna have a perfectly straight line generally so you want to try and not you want to try and mess up your line of the purple so that it's not uh, your eye isn't distracted by it yeah so it looks a little bit more natural yeah. so he's referring to down here as you can tell it's kind of goes like this because when we look at flowers it's not a perfectly straight line and then the other thing is that Perspective wise, I like to go a little bit higher on the edges of mine rather than it also being straight. So you could do that or you can even do the opposite if you want to make the center bigger. That's up to you, but I wanted to call that out that I like to do that as well. Okay, and you might be thinking, why didn't you wait, Nicole, till the green was dry? I like how it looks, how the purple kind of seeped a little bit into the green. If you don't want that, then you would wait till it's completely dry. But that was, I just, I like that look, so that's why I did that. But this is your own painting, so you can make it your own if you want to do it otherwise. Now, I am going to paint my water. I realize I'm gonna teach you something else, is if you look at this, this, looking at my color wheel, kind of a mix in between indigo and Tahoe blue, so it's a little bit more desaturated. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my, which one is my indigo? This one. So I'm gonna take my indigo, and it's pretty, it's pretty dark, but I want to desaturate it a little bit, which I don't know if there's something that Sarah talks about, but I'm gonna take the opposite color. So if I'm looking at my mm. color wheel, and I'm gonna do indigo and I'm gonna take a little bit of ochre or yellow ochre. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of this. I know she's mentioned it before. I don't know how often she mentions it though. Okay, so it's a cool thing where I took the opposite color and that desaturated it. So you can tell that's a little bit more navy. Mm -hmm. So but too much of the opposite color. Will make, make it black, black yeah. or brown. Or brown. Yeah. So you don't, yeah, so you saw, I literally just dipped my brush into there just to make it a little bit more. So you can do a mix of those colors, but I just wanted to show you that if you have more of a desaturated photo that you're trying to paint, that is what you could do. Cool. Um, Super cool. Water, I realize isn't really this color, but I think I'm gonna just go for it. Because I think it looks really pretty. So I'm gonna do the same sweeping motions, but I'm gonna use more water to make it a little bit desaturated or a little lighter. Maybe I'll add in a little bit of Tahoe blue so you can kind of mix it as well. And then what I want to do is, I'm gonna add my sun there. So I'm gonna add, just using water, and I'm gonna kind of spread it out right there. I don't know if that really worked, but I wanted to create, I don't have a paper towel. A little bit of a glimmer. Didn't really work, but. Ooh, I'm gonna test something. What if I do this? Cool. Fun. 
That's how you can have fun with it. I like that. And you'll notice that I didn't go all the way to my edge. I can either go back and do that if I want, or I think I'm gonna leave it. It'll add a kind of cool texture. What was the last step? Oh, my sun. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use my yellow ochre, make sure my brush is clean. I'm gonna add my sun. Sorry about the excessive noise in the background. Oh, That is I... the AC. Oh, fun. It yeah. is very hot here. It's very loud. Do I need to talk louder? Nope, you said, you know, it's just like a, an annoying buzz in the background. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's okay, we'll keep going. So I did my sun now. I'm done. And so I'm going to take off my tape and if I can rip this off. When I do this, I kind of pull away. If yours rips a little bit, it's okay. It will add some fun texture to your retro Polaroid. So I'm gonna pull. Wow, yeah, I can definitely hear that noise now. Yeah, Sorry, pretty, everyone. It's pretty aggressive. I'm not, I don't think it should, should be that loud, but I'm not sure. Okay, so let me rip mine off. It's gonna be very satisfying. Fun, okay, now. You did that part. You now are going to do your lettering. There are so many different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you a few of them just to get your inspiration going to figure out what you would like to do. Let me move these for a second so I can talk about these. So these are just three different ideas. So you can do it where maybe what you typically might think of is you write the place, you write the date, and maybe it's a quick phrase to, remember, to remind you about that place. Or it's just the place that you went and the date. I sometimes like to play with things and I'll just overlap it over the Polaroid, just to add some fun, different texture to it. Um, on this one, you, I wanted to show that you can also letter on top of the the Polaroid if you'd like, and you can add a phrase there. So those are a few different ways. And then when you're thinking about the tool that you want to use. So the first one I want to show is foligraphy. So if you haven't heard that term before, we have a, actually we have a whole beginner lettering series. And one of them, actually the last one is on foligraphy so this is a download that you can get and i think it's part of this kit as well but it'll explain what foligraphy is and so i'm going to show you how i used foligraphy for here so the first step to doing that is i'm going to write in this space right here is i'm going to use my micron pen so micron pen is just a regular pen so if you have a ballpoint pen if you have or a pencil if you want to use that. That is what this technique is going to be good for. So I'm first going to write out, and whether you want to do this in a script in your cursive, or if you want to do it in a block letter, you can choose to do that as well. But you'll see that I just chose to do it, or I wrote it out first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the thick downstrokes. So if you're looking at this, you can see how there's thick and thin lines, and that we can create with this brush or with this pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a thick downstroke and just basically draw it. So I'm gonna make my own. I'm just gonna make my own thick downstroke. So what that means is when my hand was going up and then when my hand's going down, that is when I'm gonna add that thick stroke. So thin on the up, thick on the down. And if this is your first time doing this and you're not sure where to when your hand was going down, there is a PDF that you can download that is a great practice tool if you want to pause and go through that. You'll see that I, I, I added dotted lines to show where that would go. So if you were using this, you would trace over and then trace over the dotted line. So that is there to help you. 
Then the cool thing is that when you add that thick downstroke, you have a few different choices. You can either color it in. So if I color it in, it makes that look, that thin and thick down look. Or another option is you can, you can draw a pattern inside of it. Maybe you draw lines inside of it. Or you can leave it open or a lot of ores. Or you can grab your watercolors and maybe I'll do it in a purple. A lot of ores. A lot of, <laughs> you can really lightly paint inside of that. So those are a couple different ways that you can use this micron pen. Then I'm gonna add my date. So I saw these in April, and then you can write out a phrase if you'd like as well. That's one option. Another option is, I think I'm going to, I'm just gonna mix these two. So, like I said, you can either draw directly on here, write a phrase, and then you can write something down here. Do I'm you going to put the blank one in the middle of those two. Look. Yeah. Perfect. Does that work? Yep, that's great. Cool. Okay, so that's one option. I'm going to do this one actually. I realize because I want to show you how if you want to get to know your brush pen, how you can do that. And so a brush pen is a flexible pen, which means that if I draw a stroke going up and I apply light pressure, I can get a thin line. If I push harder and I apply more pressure, I can get a thick line. So another great beginner lettering series that I wanna plug in is, I don't remember what number, it's towards the beginning, but it's called Thin on the Up, Thick on the Down. And that will show you how you can draw thin and thick and thin lines all within one stroke. So if you want to practice that, you can do, that's a great one as well. For this, whoa, look how cool that looks. Yeah, that looks amazing. Whoa. Um, is if you are, I would suggest this as you are starting to get comfortable with using a brush pen because it's a little bit different than the Micron pen, is what you can do is you can use a pencil first. So there is no harm in doing that. So I'm going to overlap this a little bit. I'm gonna write sunsets. So I'm drawing, I'm using, I'm just doing it in script, but again, if you want to do it in that style, you can as well. Actually, that'd be really, I'm gonna, what else would I write? Sunsets. I'm gonna write sunset magic hour. So I'm gonna show you how I can just use my block lettering. I was gonna say sunsets shouldn't be missed. Oh, okay, I'll write that for you. Sunsets. So that's just my, oh, that looks cool. My block lettering. And I'm going to take my brush pen, and so I, I basically laid out my foundation in pencil, and now I'm going to trace. And when I'm doing this is I'm gonna push harder when I'm going down. So thick on the down, thin on the up. So you can tell how that created a variance. If this is your first time, please do not be hard on yourself. This is a, it's a muscle that you're starting to train. And so by thinking thick on the down, thin on the up, it might not come natural. So that's why it's, it is okay if this doesn't work the first time. I just wanna help you and give you an option to start to gain that muscle memory. Cause we all gotta start somewhere. That's right. So, sun sets, oh, sun sets. Shouldn't be missed. If you have, if you're, if you're wanting to understand this concept, another thing that you can do is you can, I'm gonna trace over this, and I'm not thinking about pressure at all. So I'm simply 
you'll notice that all of them are basically thin strokes. Then what you can do is a similar concept to what we were doing here of thinking about and asking yourself when your hand was going down is I can do the same thing here. So I can go one is, or I can ask myself when's my hand moving down, so it's moving down here, so I'm gonna make it thicker right there. So it's going down here, so I'm gonna make that line thicker, this line thicker. Horizontal lines, I leave as is. So I'm just pushing harder and overlapping over those spots that would have been thick. Do you ever consider leaving a capital H like that, one of the lines going down? Do you ever consider leaving one of them still thin? I haven't. I wonder what that would be like. It might look. I'll try it. Okay. I'll experiment. <laughs> um, I am going to, I, or I'm going to leave this so that you can see the difference because both of these works. I don't want you to think that you have to, if you're using this brush pen, you have to get thin and thick lines. And if, you're, if you don't do that, then your lettering's wrong. Cut that out of your vocabulary. This is proving that this still looks really cool with it, me just using this brush pen and it being all thin lines. So however you make this your own, I just want to empower you to do that. Is Keenan trying this out? Yes, Keenan is. Kind of looks like it's turned. A little off, a little. Like it's missing part of itself. Like it's yeah. leaning over. <laughs> so I actually, I think we're done. That if you want, you can use your, you can use your eraser. This one is. I'm, I'm just so excited to see how you take these. Bring, bring all of us along with these different memories that you have. Um, this one I didn't speak on, but this is, I went to South Africa last year and it was one of my favorite things. And this was just a memory that I have a picture in my head. And so this is a similar concept. Actually, we have a tutorial that we did a few weeks ago that's called... Something great. Somewhere over the rainbow. Oh yeah, it's like it. something like that. Yeah. It's not somewhere over the rainbow. I can't remember. So a new, a whole new world. A whole new world. <laughs> a whole new world. There you go. <laughs> so that's like with the different hills. I just took that concept and made this here. So hopefully you have fun. Run with all these ideas. We have a Facebook group called Let's Go Make Art or let's make art lettering that I'd love for you to join, share, and show us what you are creating. We're a community that wants to cheer you on. We also have an Instagram called Let's Go Make Art, and we're just a big happy art family that we're just trying to spread love through art. So, hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.